So when you walk through the artist entrance here at the Opry House, what does that feel like for you? You know, it's always felt, because I mostly have come through the artist entrance, it feels really normal, you know? I mean, it feels really exciting, but it feels normal. And the other day I got to come backstage to watch a friend of mine perform, Claire Bowen, and it took on this whole different meaning. I got to see it not from the, is my hair and makeup ready? Does the song sound good? You know, the work mode. I just got to come and just experience it and sort of like sit in the spirit of the place a little bit more. And it was so fun. It just, there's something about this place and I know everyone knows this and they say it, but there's a weight to it. And it's, it's like a physical, it is like a church because it's like a physical space where people get to bring that spirituality they have about country music and physically touch it, you know, and it's um, very grounding. So when you're standing in that circle and you look out to the audience, do you have time to take that in or are you just kind of focused on I'm on the stage of the Opry and I'm performing and it's, and it's, it's kind of all bo- business? It's both. Um, you definitely, you know, your wheels are going like – Make sure you breathe, make sure you're hitting notes and make sure you're trying to tell a joke. And <laughs> But it, it seeps in, I think, especially as I look upwards to the balconies. I don't know why it starts to feel more like there when you start to feel like I'm seeing what so many people have looked at from this perspective that are such great influences storyteller wise music wise on so many of our lives that one is it's almost too heavy to process though when you're there and then you like look around and you'll see like you know vince gill standing there on the side it just is it's hard to process in the moment but um i remember at the end of my opry debut the clear the crowds had cleared the tours had gone home I was grabbing my last stuff. I had taken pictures and said hi to everybody. And I went into the bathroom by myself and I look at the mirror and I just was like, you are actually here. Like you actually made it here. Like send a little good vibe to all your previous selves that cried in bathrooms, hoping you would make it here, you know? (laughs) So another uh, historic stage with Opry Roots, Ramen Auditorium. Mm -hmm. You've been there too. Yes. Is that a similar experience or is that different? Um, a little more ghosty, I'd say. It has the same weight, but then a little bit more of the, you know, things creak. <laughs> it's, a, it's a fun feeling, though. I got to play, um, I've been able to play the Opry there, and I've been able to play a show um, just last September. I got to play a headlining show there, and it's so incredible because what the Opry meant and those people that have played on that stage – you can't you just can't escape it It almost like smells like it it's just like a whole vibe um and i feel like it brings out the best in me like i feel like my performances are like upped you know because i have to i have to be on par with history how would you describe your career so far and i don't mean like downloads or number of followers or yeah you know, nominations and awards, but for you personally, what has that career felt Ooh, like so far? Great question. I've never had that. And it's a wonderful question. I hope you ask that more people. For me, I came from a different career when I was around 25 and I realized that music was what I really wanted to do. And it's been an adventure, a very vulnerable adventure to step into something that you feel like you're eternally a beginner at um there's a lot of doubt and there's a lot of like is this really going to work and then when you have those validations that you're saying you know don't describe your career this way those come and it doesn't always match with when you feel like you've achieved your 100 and that part's a little confusing you have to take a step back and sink in yourself a little bit more and then you'll have times where you think you're on just everything's the right track and you'll, unfortunately, you're going to, Five minutes to show time. Five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> and you'll meet people that are sharks and you'll meet, you know, you'll have, it won't always match your inner and your outer worlds don't always match up. And I think finding good people to be around you, finding that touchstone in yourself, which for me is about the storytelling and about 
singing to a crowd and really feeling like we're on the same page. If I can achieve that, then the world's match, you know? So that's like the touchstone that I get to keep going to where it's, I don't think it matters where I'm at in my career. That's always going to be something that's really integral to who I am. I think it's safe to say that maybe you have a younger audience than some of your country music counterparts. Oh, I'll take it. So when you meet the younger audience, especially the younger girls, what do you hope the message you're sending them is? Yeah, that I hope I'm sending them a message that they are not alone. They're understood in the emotions that they're going through. Um, I hope I inspire ones that want to be singers, but I hope I inspire ones that want to be doctors and Supreme Court justices and leaders and CEOs, because I think the truth is that the human experience and then more specifically the women experience is um, something that's it's important to communicate to each other that we because there's there's for some reason in history like public speaking and women being able to explain and understand themselves by their own terms isn't uh, it isn't the dominant narrative and so I think the more that I get to tell stories and just get into a few more girls hearts you know it's like you're you're heard you're here that you're me too well you are part of uh i guess if we have to put a label on it the women of country music yeah, today um but the likes of you know carly pierce and kaylee shore and Marin morris and and do you feel like you and those guys you're paving a better road for maybe those those girls that are coming to the concerts now that will pursue a country music career I think every single person is doing that for everyone who's behind them. So I think when I think of things that are difficult for me, I think about Patsy Cline and what it must have been like for her. And she had different roadblocks, definitely more roadblocks, and she didn't give up. And she made it through. And because of the strides that she made, I don't have those same problems. And now I have different ones that I'm working through. And I don't get to give up because the next – women need it so I definitely it feels like a massive responsibility um, and it also is very encouraging because it again you feel like it's not just you walking a road and you got to face all the bumps by yourself it's a, a generational um, job can we talk about road to happiness yeah sure T tell us about the uh, the single uh, yeah road to happiness is basically I'd say for me an example of or a really good picture of what kind of is happening in my life which I was talking about a little bit earlier trying to match the inside of what I'm feeling with the outside and if you're not careful the people that you hang out with their beliefs and their expectations accidentally get stuck in your mind <laughs> and then when your expectations don't meet what's happening in your life uh, you can get depressed and it's like a, a wild thing to have to realize about yourself that you have an inner monologue that you have to control and watch out for. And I think knowing that you're not on this treadmill just to become top of the heap and that is going to be the one end all be all that you'll be happy for the rest of your life once you hit there because it's not true. And I've met a lot of successful people who aren't always happy with themselves and I've met a lot of people that don't have quote unquote all the things you want and they're just so deeply happy so it's a quest we're all on to figure out happiness is definitely where I'm at and that's why I want to put that out are you gonna perform it tonight to no, no I'm not I'm actually performing um you don't even know who I am the Patty Loveless song because I just love it and I've wanted to hear it <laughs> and then I'm gonna do Diane and Burning House so I'm just it's so fun to come to the opera because I feel like you get a chance to do a classic song and people, when you're playing for younger crowds, sometimes they get it and sometimes they don't. And when you're playing for an opera crowd, you have a full spectrum of people that are there and you know the reverence for the history of the music. And so it's really fun to sort of sit into the some of the classics. Well, have fun tonight. Thank you and so much. Thanks for coming by and hanging yeah, out with us. Yeah, thanks for great questions.